Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my Road to SSL series in 1v1. This is episode 4. Last episode, we ended up getting placed at around Diamond 2, Div 3, I believe. So this episode, we should be working through Diamond, hopefully getting up to Champ. Hope you guys enjoy. We got game number 11, first game that I'm actually ranked, um, and I'm in Diamond, and we're playing someone with a GC tag, so... Should be actually a decent opponent, and that probably shouldn't be in this rank, I'm guessing, but... I guess it's alright, because I also shouldn't be in this rank. I guess that gives me an excuse to use a little more of my mechanics. I'm playing a better player. Try not to use too many until I actually have to. Just try to teach you guys some stuff. Right, that is not what you want to do after kickoff. I'll just get a dribble gun, see what he does. Take it around him. Just take it back. Playing NASCAR out here. Yeah. Oh my god, that was so fast. Let's see what he's got. Alright, he did kind of put himself out of position after jumping for that. Alright, let's teach the dribbles. The dribbles. Can't really see him because he's in a good spot actually behind the ball, so I'm just gonna flick it. That was a banger. Well, it was a little bit of fast flick, but that's the flick that you guys need to learn. Just the front. All you do is just turn to a little bit and then arrow. Just turn to the side a little, arrow forward, and boom. Launches the ball. This would be a good game to focus on kickoffs. Let's try to get 50 here. Got my reset too, so I can recover. He is not really threatening me in this situation. He's probably just going to miss. Yep. So that's why I didn't go back to net there. Alright, we'll show the flick again. Just a little sideways turn, and then aerial forward, and it's a slammer most of the time. So a position like this, all I have to do is just make him save the ball. And now he's going to be awkward. That uses up his boost, so I can just do it again. And he ended up diving, which, once again, gives me possession. But that was actually my fault. Got a bad touch. He's still going, which is a little, a little awkward. He's going to go. He yeah, should not be going. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Excuse all right, me. this right here, just making him save it. That's all you got to do, because now he's awkward. I did kind of go for something there. <laughs> Not the best idea, but it's all right. We are in it to win it. That's true. Let me get the goal. Let me get the goal real quick. Slow reset. Okay, you want to make sure you're hitting the middle of the ball. If you do end up to the side like this, make sure you're flipping in the direction of towards the middle. So like if you're on the left side of the ball on kickoff, when you're about to hit it, make sure you flip towards the right so you get towards the middle. You just always want to make contact with the middle of the ball. Go for a little, little play here, see what happens. So that's pretty bad, I actually didn't even put it on target. That's probably one of the worst things you can do when you're going for something, is not even put it on frame. Because then they just don't have to do anything. But if you make it so they have to save it, it's the best thing you can do. So right here, I want to actually go for a good shot. Oh, and he ended up going for some reason, but, but all I gotta do is if I just, uh, he's going AFK, I think. Yeah, I don't want to score that on him after he messed up like that. Trying to make a point your opponent. Yeah, I think he gave up. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make a point here.
don't think I got it. Oh, I did. But some like that makes them have to go for it. You'll see a lot of high rank players, especially in ones. It is so useful in high level ones. If you get a reset, just to threaten that you have a reset, you don't even have to use it. You can do anything with that. If you have just a little bit of control and can get a reset, a lot of the time it's smarter to actually not use it. Because then you can just do whatever after you land. Once I get a little higher in the ranks, it'll be easier to show you what I mean by that usefully. But it is pretty important, pretty useful. Keep it up. And end of the game. End of the game. First ranked game. I was Diamond 2, Div 3, up to Diamond 3. Div 2. Yep. Alright. <coughs> game number 11. I'm in. Or game number 12. I'm in Diamond 3 right now. We got UFO Gold. Gold O Rat. Let's see what we got going Excuse on. Excuse me, what did you just say to me? I ain't saying nothing. See, if I would have flipped there in that position, is what most people that we've been playing have been doing, I would have made myself really awkward, and that's why I just drove into it. Because there was no way that he was threatening a goal on me in any way. So you don't really want to flip, because if I flip there, I'm just putting myself out of position, and he's probably just going to sit there. At this rank, you're starting to learn where the boosts are and everything, so a lot of common mistakes is that people will turn off all the ball cam, and just go straight for the boost and keep looking at the boost. But if you know where it is, you need to take it off and make sure you have your eyes on the play. Yeah, What's ball cam is there? really important. If you if you line yourself up with the boost and you know where it is, you can take ball cam or you can put ball cam back on. So you don't so you're not just completely blind of where the play is, you know. Got a little intense there to focus up. <laughs> take his boost to see what he does. Not a bad play, actually. I was just there. Just getting it past him, and even you don't even have to score every attempt. You just make them awkward with it, and then they'll probably make a mistake. Just like that. It's a lot better to just be. Don't be so aggressive. It's good to be aggressive, but. You don't need to be risky with it. You can play it safe and just wait for your opponent to make a mistake. Happens even in even in SSL ones. People will make a mistake. So if you just play safer and wait, your opponent will at some point mess up. That was good from him to not flip in that position, but it still didn't really do much for him. See, that's what I was talking about. The drive challenges are good. It doesn't put you out of position for anything. But he did flip there, which was the mistake. And as you saw, I literally just sat there and waited for him to make the mistake. I didn't I didn't challenge him at all. I was just in a threatening position where I could challenge, which makes it pretty awkward for him because he doesn't know if I'm going to or not. All right, now he's not even going to kick. I was just flipping for the boost. I hear him pre-jump, so I'm not going to just give it to him. A little air dribble going on there. I heard him jump. That's why I didn't immediately just flip into the ball or pop it up. Because then I would have probably gotten dunked. Alright, I was Diamond 3, Div 2. Let's see what I'm getting up to. Diamond 3, Div 3. Yeah. Alright, got game number 13 against Tox Mox. This is a high Diamond 3. So they are at least flipping on kickoff, which is good. But the lower ranks, it's a, it's a little harder for them to control their car compared to a higher ranked player. So the kickoffs are just a little less consistent for them. But you do want to make sure you get solid connection with the middle of the ball. Just go for a little something, see what he does. Not the defense on a lot. Alright, well, I will resume with the flicks. Just once I see him start coming at me, I'll flick. And he pushed a little too far up. 
Fake challenges are good, but they can be pretty obvious. You should make sure you fake challenge far enough away from the ball that if they do flick it when they fake when you fake challenge, you'll be able to recover and save it. That's the whole point of fake challenging. Is making them save making them flick it or do something with it so you can have a possession on the ball. Or so you can make the save rather than having to make it on the goal line every time. I'll let him panic a little bit. He doesn't have boost, so he's just kind of panicking and flipping at it. Now I got possession. Cut it in field. Going down the line is not the best idea because you only have one real option, and that's just to cut it in field and go straight for the goal. So if you have the ball, taking it across into the midfield is really good because it makes it a lot harder to defend because you have so many more options. Once I saw him turn a little bit towards me, that's when I pulled the trigger on the flick. That was a good challenge. Take possession here. Bad touch for me, so I'll just get a 50 on it. Just clear it, since I'm not done a much boost. He didn't end up going for the mid. That's why I took it. He probably should have, when he was going back and he saw that I had no boost, he should have taken that mid on recovery, like I just missed. I just did the exact thing that I was saying he should have done. <coughs> but if you're recovering back, make sure you're taking that boost so they can't get it. Boost starving in ones is really important. It's it's useful in twos as threes, twos and threes as well. But ones boost starving is really important. Then I mean, go driving around in circles, taking their base. All right, we got up to champ. <coughs> Champ 1, Div 3. <laughs> Alright, we got game number 14. We're up in the champ lobbies now. So the players are going to be a little better. We got It's Rogers, 1109. Just focus a little more on kickoffs. You want to make sure you're getting goal side and hitting the middle of the ball. Just like that, you'll get a good 50 on it. I'll let him panic here. Like I said, he's flipping at it. I mentioned it in a lot of the other games. Lower ranks flipping at the ball is not the best option unless you're in a good spot to recover after the flip. See, I flipped there, but I'm not in any pressure after the flip, which is why I flipped. Oh my, what a save. <laughs> Alright, I'll wait for him to turn at the ball once I see him. He's not turning, so I'm just going to put it behind him. Right here, I was waiting for him to turn at the ball, and once he turned, I was going to flick it, but he just stayed facing that way, so I just put it in a place that would be awkward for him to save. Normally, if you put it behind a player, that is one of the best places to shoot it, because one, it's hard to save because you're facing the wrong direction, but two, if you put it behind them and they save it, they cannot counterattack immediately, because they have to go backwards and it's awkward to save. So if you put it across the net, we're in front of them, and they save it, they're probably slamming it into the corner, and then they have that momentum, and they're probably getting the corner boost to make a play. But if you put it behind them, they have to be, they're going to be a little awkward saving that. So it's just a better option, like here. I'll put it in a place that will make him awkward. I saw him going, that's why I flicked there. I'm just going to fake here. That's smart of him not to flip. Watch, if I just put it behind him, he's going to be awkward and he can't counterattack, so I can just shoot again. That's all you got to do. Putting it behind someone is really smart. Went for a little angle on that. Now, I don't really want to flip because I'm in his corner, and if he gets a good 50 and I'm mid flip in his corner it's probably just a goal because I'll be out of position I wait for him to turn at the ball and then I flip see he fake challenge which was good but he wasn't far enough back to be able to save anything that's why right when you see them turn is the best place to flick because then they'll be a little awkward after
good kick off from him. I'll let him shoot it. I know I was going to be able to make the save just because of where he was at. Now I'm low on boost, so I'm trying to grab as many pads as I can before I actually have to make the save. See, he probably didn't think I'd boost. That's why he tried to go past me. But I had a couple pads, so I was able to get over there and save it. I'll just shadow defend. I'm going to make sure in between him and the goal, so he has no way to get it around me. That's all he could do is just go forward with it. Right here, I'm not trying to score this. I'm just making him save it. Because, look, now he's flying off his back wall. Now he's just getting a little upset, I think, and insta-challenging. Just putting in an awkward spot. It's not even trying to score. Just making him awkward. Making him waste all his boost so I can steal his corner. He's probably going to flip here. Yep. I can just get the boost again. Now he's boost up. Alright, now right here, you don't want to go down the line. You want to take it across. Because I can do anything here. Like, I can just do a little hook shot. That's all you got to do. If you take it across the field like that, they basically cannot challenge you. If he challenges me, I can just cut it around him. If he doesn't challenge me, I can just shoot it. Taking it across field when your opponent is recovering is really good. It'll put you in a lot better position than just going down the line. And we're already up to C2 after that game. Those are going to be all the games for today's episode. We ended up getting up to Champ 2, Div 1. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, guys! <laughs> Please like and subscribe.